Gluten. People are starting to cringe when they hear the name. Restaurants are starting to market themselves as healthy. And individuals with a health conscious mindset are starting to take on gluten free diets. Does this actually mean that gluten is bad? In this video, we tackle this man. As always, these videos have three sections. A subject, which in this case is gluten. Then we move on to the facts, the figures and the opinions. And lastly, the long awaited, the verdict or the conclusion, whether this is a myth or a fact. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We do health tip, trick and hack videos and Mythbuster videos just like this one every week. So with no further ado, let's dive in. So what is gluten? Gluten is majority found in wheat, barley and rye. Of the gluten containing grains, wheat is the most commonly consumed. The two main components of gluten is glutenin and gliadin. And gliadin is the component that most of the health effects are associated with. Flour is mixed with water. It creates a sticky network which has a glue-like consistency. This gives the dough the elasticity and the ability to rise when baked. Additionally, it also provides a satisfying and chewing texture to the food. Fun fact, the name gluten is derived by the glue-like consistency of the wet dough. Gluten is the only protein that the body does not know how to digest. Well, glutenin and gliadin, when entered to the digestive tract, it interprets it as an attack and releases a immune response from the body, which causes inflammation and irritability. As gluten is a sticky substance that sticks to the walls of the small intestine and it can cause immune and digestive disorders. There's increasing and growing number of people associated with gluten sensitivity and actually it's turning into a epidemic and a reason for a growth in inflammatory and immune based disorders. Now that we've understood what gluten is, let's dive into the figures, facts and the research and figure out whether gluten is bad for you. Number one, nutrition and processed food. While many people on consumer reports thought that gluten free diets are healthier and denser in micro and macronutrients, the very opposite is true. Majority of the gluten free products are fortified with folic acid and other micronutrients versus gluten containing conventional food, which are much higher in bioavailability. The problem here is most gluten free foods are high in either sugar or fat and there's been numerous amount of research that there is a clear relationship with weight gain. Number two, composition. Rice versus white bread argument. Japan on one extreme has one of the highest life expectancies in the world and one of the lowest obesity rates in the world. Yet they consume more carbs than America who's on the other end of the spectrum, where over three quarters of the population is obese. The key difference between the nations is the source of carbs. One is where you get your carbs through rice, which is slow digesting and high in nutrient value. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, you get white bread or burgers or pizza. There's another problem. We've moved away from traditional methods of preparing gluten containing foods, which range from two days to prepare a loaf of bread to two hours. And in addition to that, we've introduced a genetically modified wheat, which is easier for the bakers to work with, which have reduced amount of nutrients and antigen properties which irritate your bowel. Number three, celiac or allergies. There are individuals who are still experiencing certain symptoms from consuming gluten. And these individuals are then known to have a gluten sensitivity. The funny part is they would come up negative from a celiac test. However, they would be experiencing symptoms such as bloating, diarrhea, or irritable bowel syndrome when they eat gluten containing foods. One such cause is wheat allergy, not a gluten allergy developing a condition known as non-celiac gluten sensitivity. However, the science in this area is still inconclusive and we're yet to learn much more about it. So long story short, it makes sense for individuals who have a celiac disease or a wheat allergy to avoid gluten as individuals with these conditions cannot tolerate gluten even in very small amounts such as 50 milligrams. That would be the size of a crouton. Number four, gut health. Inflammation from wheat is also a problem, even if you're not sensitive to gluten. Amylase trypsin inhibitors, or ATIs, 
which are a non-gluten protein found in wheat that are attributed to inflammatory symptoms and digestive disorders. This occurs in individuals irrespective of a celiac condition or not. And it's a completely different problem than gluten. But the sad part is majority of the marketing associates gluten with digestive disorders and does not differentiate this with ATIs. So how does ATIs cause intestinal and digestive disorders? It causes a inflammatory response which causes intestinal permeability. The digestive system has a complex border control system that allows only what's required from the digestive food to enter through the blood system and keep everything else away. Think about it. Every day you consume large amounts of chemicals, bacteria and viruses and the intestine is your first line of defense against all of these. When ATIs are in full effect, this functionality breaks apart and causes intestinal permeability. This is usually referred to as a leaky gut syndrome, which I think most of us have heard of. Number five, brain. Majority of the time, gluten or wheat is associated with gut syndromes. But there's another part of the body that's directly impacted, the brain. Brain fog and brain fatigue is a symptom of gluten sensitivity or non-celiac gluten sensitivity as well. This is because a natural connection exists between the gut and the brain. A disturbance in your gut microbiome has been associated with increases in vulnerability to diseases such as Alzheimer's or dementia. And autoimmunity in general, whether gut or brain, is associated with symptoms such as depression. That doesn't mean that gluten is the only cause of mental disorders, but that it could be one of the reasons that individuals might be facing or experiencing these disorders. So with all that said, do you now think that we're ready to bust this myth? Is gluten bad for you? No, but not for everyone. A non-modified, traditionally prepared and fermented moderated amount of gluten via sources such as wheat, barley or rye is still healthy. However, one thing that we need to be conscious of is that it needs to be consumed in moderation and not as the foundation to our food pyramid. In terms of a recommendation, if you are conscious that you're sensitive to gluten, you can simply purchase a very cheap test that you could do at home. Alternatively, if the test doesn't show up positive but yet you have symptoms such as irritable bowel or bloating or diarrhea, you might want to consider giving up gluten and see how you feel. Or if you have an autoimmune disease, take a functional approach, overcome the autoimmune disease and introduce gluten in small amounts to your diet and see what happens. That's it for this video. And if you guys found this video useful, comment, like and share. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you on the next video.